New Zealand has some of the highest densities of vestibular wasps in the world. As part of achieving predator-free 2050, novel gene technologies that have the potential to drastically suppress invasive wasp populations on a national scale are being developed. Conservation volunteers are the boots on the ground with experience controlling wasps with Vespex and are therefore in a unique position to provide insights into how new technologies such as gene drive may be received by the public. A recent study of 23 conservation volunteers found that whilst there is a high level of support for novel gene technologies as a novel wasp control method, support was based on certain conditions being met and there are many questions to be answered before employing the new control methods. Next, we hear from Phil Lester, leading wasp scientist and author of The Volga Wasp. He'll discuss several of the key questions and concerns raised in this study. So our, our goal was really to produce infertile males. How we'd do that is we'd change the genetic makeup of queens. Um, and those queens would then be released in the population, but would only be able to produce males that are infertile. We release those into the environment, and then it would probably take 20 or 30 years for actually for us to be able to see population reductions in wasp populations. Uh, wasps could get on a ship and go back to their native range in Europe or somewhere like that and affect populations there. What we're trying to do about that is to target genotypes or, or the genetic makeup of wasp populations in New Zealand that are specific to here, that, that would mean that wasp populations everywhere aren't affected by that. Maybe some in the native range would be affected, but not every population everywhere. It's possible that, that when we, if we lowered the populations of wasps substantially, then you might see outbreaks of things like cabbage white butterflies. They might become more abundant because we know wasps do eat those caterpillars on those plants. So it's possible that we could see secondary pest outbreaks, we call them in ecology. Whilst gene drive for controlling other species, such as mosquitoes, as a means of controlling malaria, is ready to roll out. Gene drive for wasp control probably won't be ready until 2030 at the earliest. Even if gene drive was used in New Zealand, it will still take 10 to 30 years to suppress wasp numbers and it would not eradicate wasps entirely. What this means is that the need for volunteer involvement and the use of Vespex isn't going anywhere anytime soon. However, gene drive does have the potential to control wasps on a national scale and it would have long lasting impacts, something that is not possible with current control methods. So what next? It's still unclear as to what the public consultation process will look like. However, it's likely that in the future, we will have the opportunity to make submissions via the EPA. In the meantime, I encourage you to leave your thoughts or questions in the comment section of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope that this has given you a better understanding of gene drive and has covered some of your concerns that arose as part of my study.